to Inter's Camp 2020 with Cork CEF. We're so delighted that you're joining with us. I'm sorry that I can't be at the camp centre this year, but I hope that you're safe and you're well and that your families are well also. I hope you're um, going to join with us for the next few days. Uh, we've got a great lineup for you with leaders who have come to help us do the talks and the memory verses. And we hope you enjoy the songs as well. And we hope that with your parents' permission, you'll send in pictures and videos of you reaming off the memory verses, of the, you doing the crafts, and maybe even any fun things that you got up to this summer. And you can send those to cork at cfireland.com, but only with your parents' permission. So we're gonna sing the song, Jesus is the good, good news. And that is so true in all of our situations, be good or bad, Jesus is always good news. He's never not good news, and he's always the best thing that we can hear about. And I uh, hope you join in the singing, join in with the actions, and have some fun. after all that singing and dancing. I hope you joined in and I hope you sang and had so much fun. Next we'll go to Sarah who's gonna teach us our memory verse on 1 Peter chapter five, verses seven to nine. Listen up and we hope you engage with it and learn it and that you'll send in your videos of the memory verse as you read it off. Maybe the different antics that you might get up to doing that. Hello everybody, my name is Sarah Louise and I really hope you're enjoying Inter's Camp 2020 so far. Um, it's quite different to normal, I don't usually come to camp from my kitchen and I'm sure you guys are in lots of different places um, or the country. But it's really amazing that we can still get to come together and learn about Jesus and learn about all the amazing things that God has done for us, even in these very, very challenging times. So my job today is I'm going to be teaching you a memory verse which is basically just um, some, a piece of scripture, so something written in the Bible uh, that we learn off by heart and that we can use in our daily lives. So that'll help us in our journey with God, um, whether we're, we're questioning faith, whether we're deciding whether or not we're going to follow Jesus. This is a really good way to, to learn more about him. And, and maybe if you have made that decision um, to ask Jesus into your heart or to ask Jesus um, to be um, in charge of your life. And if, if you want to follow him, then... It's a really good way to help you in that journey. Um, so this memory verse is from the book of 1 Peter and you guys are going to be learning a lot about the life of Peter, um, which is quite helpful when we're learning a memory verse. It's nice to know about the person who wrote it. Um, but this memory verse is actually the one, one of the ones that I learned um, 
when I was in junior camp. Um, I think it was the very first one I learned actually. Um, I can still remember it now. So hopefully you guys will learn it well enough that you can still say it when you're 23, like I am, or even older, hopefully. Um, so what we'll do is I'll just read it out first um, and then in proper camp fashion we'll, uh, we'll mix it up a little bit. So normally at camp we also count it in and then say the Bible says. Um, so I'll do it myself this time and then you can read along with me next time. So, one, two. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5 verses 7 to 9. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. Okay, so I think we'll just say it a couple of times together. I'm going to have the words come up here, I hope. Um, and we'll just read it out. It's good to get an idea of how it goes. So, I'll count us in. One, two. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 7 to 9. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. Brilliant. Okay, we're going to say it again, straight away, just to, to keep us going. Okay, one, two. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 7 to 9. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. Great. Okay, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, this first verse um, in chapter 7. And I think it's a really helpful verse, particularly at the moment because it says, cast all your anxiety on him. Um, now, cast isn't a word that we use very often now. Um, I'd normally associate it with fishing or maybe like throwing a dice, casting a die. Um, but it's quite apt considering um, Peter was a fisherman. It's a pretty good word to use and it's quite a good word to, to show us that we can, we can literally just throw forward. It's, it's an idea that we're, we're you know, pushing forward, throwing forward um, all our anxieties, all the things that are worrying us. Um, on him and that's really incredible um, and he doesn't just say cast some of them select one or two that aren't too annoying it says absolutely all the things that worry you there's nothing that's too small there's nothing that's too big there's nothing that's too even if it's something that um that you can't quite get your head around and he wants to know them all he wants to be able to take them all and he wants you to come to to him with everything um and i suppose if you have a think um, for a moment about maybe the things that are making you anxious, the things that make you worry at the moment. Um, for me, I think a lot of it is, is you know, what the world is going to be like at the moment. There's so much change and in these times of, of confusion and, and change, it is a really anxious time and the fact that we can, it says in the Bible, it's written by um, someone who walked with Jesus. He says you can cast all your anxiety on him, everything that gives you that tight feeling in your chest and makes you think, oh good gracious, I can't cope with this, all of that, he'll take. Um, and I think the most important thing is the because. It says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And I think that's such a key part of this. Um, so when you're learning it, just remember that it's because he cares for you. It's because he loves you so much that he wants to take all those anxious things. Um, and it doesn't mean that everything's going to be amazing, everything's going to be rosy, but it means that you don't have to go through it alone, that you don't have to, to carry all these burdens on by yourself because Jesus wants to come alongside you um, and he wants you to be able to go to him with the things that are wearing, him, wearing you. So we're going to go through it a couple more times. I'm going to bring the slides back up and I'm going to take away a couple of words. We normally do that um, when, we're at, when we're at camp. Um, I'm trying to get the camp feeling, <laughs> um, but hopefully hopefully that'll work. So um, I'm going to count us in again and we're going to have some words blurred out. So one, two. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 7 to 9, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, 
because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. Brilliant, okay. Hopefully you managed that. We're gonna take a couple more words away and see how you do. So, one, two. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses seven to nine, cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. Brilliant, okay. Now, in true camp fashion, we're gonna, we're gonna, do some, gonna go a little crazy. Um, feel free to get on your feet, join along. If you wanna just laugh at me doing it, that's all good. So this time, we're gonna have no words and we're gonna say it, spinning in a circle. You can go as fast or as slow as you like um, and that should be a little bit, that should make it a little bit more challenging. So, one, two. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 7 to 9, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. Amazing. I'm going to have to go the other way because I'm very dizzy. So, one, two. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 7 to 9, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, I'm going to have to go have a sit down. Um, so I really hope that was helpful. Um, and hopefully in a couple of days, you guys will know that really, really well. Um, and just be able to remember, it'll remi be a reminder um, that no matter what you face, no matter what challenges or anxieties you come up against, that you can cast all of them on him because he cares so, so much for you. Isn't it great that we can hold on to God's promise that all our worries, all our cares, whether it be about COVID or school or what's going to happen come September or all the different things about um, that's going on in the news. Isn't it great that we can trust in God with all our cares, with all the things that maybe unsettle us and we don't know what's going to happen. But isn't it great that we can be thankful that we can trust in God in heaven and that he never lets us down with any worries and that we can come to him because he cares for us and no matter what we can trust him with everything Well, I think Michael is going to win Tidy Dom because nobody else here. I hope you're keeping your own rooms tidy. Next, we're going to have our talk with Brandon. It's a really good, really good story of a great character in the Bible and involved him and Jesus. Listen up. Hi, I'm Brandon. It is so good to be here today. Over the next few days, we're going to be talking about Jesus as seen through the life of Peter. Today's lesson is about how Jesus makes a difference, so pay special attention to that big idea in regards to everything else that we talk about today. So grab your Bibles, grab a seat, and let's begin. Today's lesson takes place in Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Now remember, our big idea today is that Jesus makes a difference, so pay very close attention to all the ways that Jesus makes a difference in the lives of the people in our lesson today. Now Luke chapter 5 starts off and it tells us that uh, on this occasion that there was a very large crowd that was gathered and they were listening to Jesus as they were teaching. And so I'm going to draw in just a crowd of people here really quick. And this large crowd had gathered simply to be able to hear Jesus preach and teach and to hear what he had to say. But this crowd, as they gathered, they pressed in so that they could hear the words that Jesus had to say. Now, this crowd was getting very, very large. And as they got larger and as they pressed in further, Jesus was at this place. It was the Sea of Gesenaret or the Sea of Galilee, as we, uh, as we call it. 
And so he, he called for this boat that was right there, and, and he asked if he could get into the boat. And it happened to be a boat that belonged to the guy that we're going to be talking about over the course of these next few days. And, and this guy, it was Peter. So the boat belonged to Peter. And, and as Jesus got into Peter's boat, he asked him to push back a ways from the, 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 the edge of the water there so that he could preach and teach to the people and they wouldn't be crowding him too much. And so Peter stepped out there and Jesus was preaching and teaching and he was talking to the crowd. And when he got done speaking to the crowd, he, he told Peter, Peter, I want you to push off into the deep water and I want you to cast your nets out into the water and, and, and I want you to go fishing. I want you to put your nets out there. And Peter, when he was looking at Jesus and they pushed out into the deep, Peter said, oh, Jesus, you know, we had already, like, we've already done our fishing after a whole long night and we didn't catch anything and we were already cleaning all of our nets. That was when you showed up and, and you know, you got into my boat and stuff and, and I'm, I'm a fisherman and, and I know that not anything is going to happen because, like, we already went out there and this isn't the time of day for fishing and it's just, it's not going to be good. And Jesus said, push on out into the deep and cast your nets out there. And so Peter, he looked at Jesus first and he said, no, I'm not, not going to do that. That's not a good idea. It's not going to happen. And so just no, it doesn't work. But he did say right after that, if you tell me to do so, then I will do what you tell me to do. And so Jesus said, go on out, cast your nets out. And so Peter agreed with a great big check mark. And he said, okay, fine. I'll go. Now, while he was out there, he put out his nets. And, and in the nets, they, they ended up getting some fish. And we'll color this in green a little bit to show there's some fish that's in there. And the Bible says that they got a large number of fish in that net when he cast it out there. It was so much fish. It was huge. It was large. It was a large number of fish that they caught. In fact, it was such a large number of fish that... The net could hardly contain it. And as Peter was trying to pull all of these fish in, the boat that he was in began to sink. And he called for his associates to help. And his associates came out there and they brought their boat out and they tried to help haul in this large number of fish that they had captured. And, and in trying to do so, both of the boats were beginning to sink. And so finally they were able to get all these fish in and they got themselves to shore and, and Peter got out of the boat. Now, this represents Peter right here. And Peter, he, he fell down, the Bible says, he fell down at Jesus' knees and he said, Lord, I am a sinful man. And we're gonna draw a little picture right here to represent Peter acknowledging that he was a sinful person. And he said, Jesus, please depart from me. I am sinful. And the Bible had this word to say of what Peter had done when he fell at his knees. He, let's see if you guys can figure it out as we're filling it in. And if you're following along in your Bibles in Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11, you might actually be able to see it. The word is astonished. Peter was astonished at what he had seen that had happened right there. He was astonished at the miracle that had occurred and he knew that Jesus was something more than what was just a teacher or a good teacher or someone who spoke really well. He knew and he could see that Jesus was something so much bigger and so much better and he had control over not just the words and able to speak good things, but he, was, he recognized that Jesus had control over everything. You know, this isn't the very first time that Peter had seen that Jesus had ability and power and that he was probably something more than just a good teacher. In fact, Peter's brother, Andrew, was the very first one that Jesus had called in. And it wasn't not that much longer or that much earlier than what happened right here that Peter, his mother-in-law, was sick and Jesus had actually healed his mother-in-law. And so Peter had seen Jesus do some things. But this time, when, when Jesus got into Peter's boat, it was something different. And when he told Peter to cast out into the deep and to put his nets out in the water and there was this huge catch of fish which about sank their boats, 
Peter recognized something about him. He recognized in himself that he was sinful, but he recognized that Jesus was holy and perfect. He recognized that he was something so much more than just a good teacher. And he fell down at Jesus' knees, astonished by what Jesus had done. And Jesus said, don't be afraid. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you to follow me. And now you're not going to be a fisher of people or a, a, a fisher uh, of fish any longer. I'm going to make you a fishers of men. You see, when, when Peter called out his associates to help him to, to bring in that large catch of fish, it wasn't just Peter that was astonished over this. Peter and his associates that day, when Jesus called them out and, and, and showed them that what he was capable of doing, he said, I'm going to make you fishers of men. And the Bible says that Peter and his associates, they left everything that they had. They, they brought their boats in and they just left them right there. And they, they went and they followed Jesus. And so today in our lesson, in our story, as we're talking about things, I want you guys to think about and recognize how Jesus makes a difference. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this here. You see, um, our main idea today, Jesus makes a difference, is, is the big idea. That's the point that I want you to get. And so where in our lesson today did we see that Jesus makes a difference in the lives of people? Well, the very first one is the crowd right here. The crowd, they, they gathered from everywhere and they came in and they wanted so much to hear Jesus. They got really, really close to him and there was a huge group of people. And so these people sought out Jesus is what Luke chapter 5 tells us. They were looking for him. They, they didn't just like walk around and go, oh, hey, there's this guy talking. I'm going to listen. No, they sought him out. Jesus' words made a difference. And so much so that they were looking for Jesus so they could hear the things that he was going to say. And so the very first thing that we see in how Jesus makes a difference is he made a difference in the lives of the people here. They sought him out. The crowd wanted to hear him. But that wasn't everything. You see, Peter, when, when he was there, he was at the edge of the Sea of Galilee, and, and he was cleaning his nets, and he was finishing up a long day of work. And, and Peter stopped what he was doing to listen to Jesus, which is the next thing that, that we see where Jesus made a difference. Peter stopped what he was doing to hear and listen to Jesus. So where all the crowds sought Jesus out, Peter, he, he stopped everything that he was doing so that he could listen as well. And then we see right over here that, that Peter did something more. Jesus told him to go back out and cast his nets out one more time. Now, Peter, he, he was an expert fisherman. He, he was very successful at his job and what he did. And, and Jesus, he wasn't a fisherman. Jesus was a carpenter. And he was, he was someone who talked to people and would teach and would preach. And so he wasn't a fisherman. He wouldn't have the same expertise that Peter did. But Peter still listened to what Jesus said. Peter said, you know what? It's not going to work, but if you tell me to do that, that's what I'll do. And so Jesus made a difference in, in Peter, in what Peter knew wouldn't work. He still did it anyway. He followed the instructions of what Jesus told him to do, even though he didn't think it was going to work. And what turned out was that it was the biggest catch he had ever had, so much so that it was sinking a couple of boats, which is absolutely amazing. But you see, that's not everything that we see where Jesus made a difference in the lives of people. You see, when Peter had recognized that he was a sinful person and he recognized the power and the might and the majesty and the glory of Jesus, Peter and his associates, they left everything behind and they became fishers of men. So Jesus made a difference in their lives that very day in the thing that they saw that was spectacular and amazing, that miracle of the great hall of fish. They they, they left everything behind so that they could follow Jesus. So there are several different instances where Jesus, uh, we, we see that Jesus made a difference in the lives of others. But what do we do with this information? What's the important thing that you can take home with all of this? Well, the very first thing that I want you to understand is that you need to be real. And what I mean by being real is that you need to recognize your sin and recognize Christ's perfection. That's what Peter did right here. Peter, when, when he saw what Jesus was able to do, he came back and he fell at Jesus' knees and he said, Lord, please depart from me. I'm a sinful person. Peter recognized that he was sinful. We need to recognize our sinful nature as well. But it doesn't need to stop right there at just recognizing that sinful nature, nature. You also need to recognize how perfect and amazing that Jesus is. Because just recognizing that you're wrong isn't enough. You need to recognize and put your faith into the amazing glory and majesty of Jesus Christ. And so you need to be real.
The next thing that you need to do is be transformed. And that's where you need to allow Christ to actually make a difference in your life. We can seek out Jesus, but if we just seek out to hear his words, that doesn't mean anything. Now, Peter and his associates, they heard the words of Jesus, and those words transformed them so much so that they left everything behind. And so we also need to be transformed. We need to allow Jesus to do a work within us. And, and, and when we do that, then he's going to take us from whatever we are, and he's going to make us fishers of men. And that's the last thing that I want you guys to know, which is really important, is we, we need to be real, we need to be transformed, but then we also need to be fishers of of men. And that means that we need to share with others the amazing difference that Jesus makes in us. We need to share that. We need to go out. We shouldn't hide our faith or, or be cautious or careful about who we share it with or how we share it. You see, Peter would go out and he would fish, and Jesus said, you're not a fisherman anymore. You're a fisher of men now, and you're going to share your faith, and you're going to talk about the things that, that I have done for you, and you're going to to show people and tell people how I made a difference in, in your life, and then you're going to help me to allow to make a change in their lives as well. And so when we, we, uh, we start by being real and recognize that we are a sinful person and that Christ is perfect and amazing, and then we allow ourselves to be transformed by God, we, we need to be transformed by the power and the grace and the mercy of Jesus Christ, and then we need to uh, go out and we need to be fishermen. We need to allow Jesus to use us to make a transformation in other people. And so those are the things that I want you guys to take away today. The very first thing is uh, Jesus makes a difference. He makes a difference in all of our lives. And we saw that he did it in the lives of the people. He did it in the life of Peter. He did it in the life of Peter's family with Andrew before that. He did it in the life of Peter's mother-in-law when he healed her. He did it in the lives of Peter and his associates, the other fishermen that were with him. And then in all of that, what we need to take home with this is that one, we need to be real, Two, you need to be transformed. And then lastly, you need to become a fisherman or a fisher of men. And so that's our lesson today. I hope you guys had fun. I hope you were able to track along with things. And we'll be back here again tomorrow with a brand new lesson. Hope you guys had a good day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Isn't it great that God can use something simple like a fish or loaves of bread? And how he could do that? Because Jesus makes a difference. Because He's God's son. And isn't it great that we can be astonished at all the miracles that Jesus did because they were true? And isn't it great that God chose Peter to use Peter to have Peter wrote about so we can learn how Jesus involved himself with his life and how Jesus wants to involve himself with our life to make a difference in our life as well. And I know that Jesus has made a difference in my life and that's why I'm standing here today. I hope you engage with what Brendan's done and there should be notes that you can download from the YouTube channel. And if they're not there, please just contact us at cork at cfisland.com and we can send you on the notes that Brandon prepared for us.
Next, let's see what our lone camper is up to. Don't forget to be real, be transformed, and to tell others what God has done in your life. And so we'll see you tomorrow with another fun-filled day. But don't forget, if you know the memory verse, so if you've got pictures of the craft, or if you want to send us pictures of what you got up to in the summer, with your parents' permission, you can send them to cork at cefireland.com. We look forward to catching up with you. And if you have any other questions, you can email us those to us as well and we will reply and do our best to answer them. Thank you for joining us. See you tomorrow.